What was Tudor thinking? That's the question. We can ask it rhetorically and leave it there, no answers needed, or try to address the process that the company and the creative team went through when producing the P01. It's a watch worth discussing for a few reasons. A design that is polarizing, unique, some might say ultimately flawed, one that many believe should have been left as a prototype, and a model, a year after being released, that has become quite the cult watch, or has it? That is worth investigating. Why was there much derision or disregard when this piece was released? Many of us know the story now, but simply it was in part due to its obscurity, yes. But for those of us who use social media, it was because of the bait and switch tactic that Tudor used before premiering the watch at Basel World 2019. Many of us expected to see the revival of the Submariner, a watch that would have undoubtedly stolen the show. I think we can all agree that it is one of their biggest aces up their sleeve at this point. And the way the original photos were presented before the unveiling, very subtly, very macro focused, we could see cues that lined up with the Submariner. I might be mistaken, but they even included a Mercedes hour hand in one of them. So having your audience expect this, only for them to receive this, you can understand the disappointment. The enthusiasts, even the journalists and bloggers, threw their arms up in the air. After a year, the watch still sits in a niche area, and nobody really knows what to make of it. The hardcore enthusiast would enjoy a watch like this because it is unique and has an interesting history. There's no doubt that the P01 has an X factor that most dive watches, especially within the current Tudor lineup, they simply don't. But at what cost? The new time watch buyer probably would give a watch like this a miss. The argument, when looking at it from a more design-oriented perspective, can be quite multi-layered. First, when we consider that this watch was an attempt to step away from the typical Black Bay case design. It was a bold move for the company to decide to release a model that expresses their philosophy, born to dare. It is quite a literal manifestation of that statement, but the method was tactical. Instead of bringing out an entirely new watch, they still used the typical dial and handset that links to all Black Bays in the family. So yes, they were being experimental, but didn't fully commit. If we think about the dial aesthetics, they took a risk, but also played it safe. Then it's addressing the function of the bezel. Sure, it's unique, quite the novelty actually, but how does it impact the wearing experience? How practical is the application? Not very. We must remember that this watch was conceived at a time when bezels on dive watches, at least in the Rolex and Tudor family, did not have a ratcheting function. Bezels were secured with a friction fit, and the clicking that we hear from our bezels today only came in later. So in essence, this was one of the original mechanisms, or at least experiments, to create a ratcheting bezel. When you think of it that way, there is some charm to it. There was clearly thought that went into the idea of securing a bezel to be used more safely. But there is no escaping that this reference was a prototype, given to the US Navy that was ultimately rejected. And the simple answer is because the watch just wasn't anywhere near as practical as the pieces that were chosen. There is a reason why the Submariners at the time were used and have since been used and improved for decades. So really, the P01 is quite a novelty. Above everything else, it serves as one of the many failed prototypes from a watchmaker. Why did they remake it then? This maybe adds to the idea that the concept of the watch was outgoing, but safe enough to execute, keeping the Black Bay dial aesthetic but modifying the case. Tudor captured the styling very well, going to the lengths to make the watch look like it had been punched out of a machine, with no chamfering on the edges of the case, very sharp lines that follows through to the crown guards. The details are impressive. Just when you look at the bezel knurling, for example, details weren't skipped, but we have to ask, was it necessary to recreate the watch to appear almost exactly like a rushed, simply finished prototype? In the early phases of prototyping, finish is never important. Could they not have jazzed up the case with some rounded edges with this newer rendition? Food for thought. There have been many complaints that the watch is too thick, that the system of how the bezel mechanism works gets in the way of wearability. The added articulating end link to leather strap integration is a very peculiar choice, considering how other options could have been implemented. 
See the P01 on a typical rivet oyster bracelet. It looks incredible. The steel on steel finish with complementary bezel really completes the aesthetic. But this method of strap integration does not feel refined enough. That then could leave us thinking that this watch was also rushed. Maybe the deadlines were pressing the development process. If we refer to the original model, some details about it really stand out and make it unique. Just the use of thicker, longer lugs, giving off a squared aesthetic. The large complementary arrow at the 12 o'clock position, indicating where the end link ratchet needs to be adjusted for the bezel. The use of the Mercedes hand on the dial. These elements make it feel slightly more relatable. The size and scale of the model, possibly with a small dial aesthetic. More emphasized minute marks, a rounded hour hand that has been used by Tudor before. These elements could have been carried through to the newer iteration, or at least considered. A more literal imitation of the original design might have helped it position itself differently. The choice of using a diving bezel would have probably made it more appealing as well. So it is clear that Tudor took liberties from the original, but didn't copy it wholesale. Again, this feeds back to the idea that they were willing to be more creative, and maybe really giving Tudor the benefit of the doubt. The so-called unfinished aesthetic is maybe what they were going for in the first place. Who knows? Instead of looking at the P01 as a success or a failure, we can think of the watch as a concept in another way. This model exhibits an idea of creative opportunity for the brand. Just for a second, imagine if Tudor is able to bring future prototypes to life. This could open up a completely new avenue for the brand. An entire series dedicated to these obscure watches of the past. Maybe looking more directly to Rolex as an example. We could see a ludicrous take on the original Rolex Deep Sea Special with a more wearable case shape, a gorgeous crystal. That would make for an excellent talking point. Maybe a keener eye and more attention on the Milsub or the Marine Nationale models. This watch shows us that there is great potential for creative opportunity in the future and hopefully the P01 has been successful enough to prompt the idea to further the series. The design of the Tudor P01 will continue to divide opinion for some time. Many will say it's ugly. Many will say it should never have been recreated. But it is a model that may be sought after in years to come because it is one of a few, maybe the only known concept watch that has been recreated with modern componentry. And when we compare a model like this to the generic black bays that have risen to the heights of being some of the most popular watches in the world at this point, the P01 is a black bay with an X factor. Cut it as thin as you like. Without question, it is an enthusiast's watch, maybe even a collector's watch, and will have a further reach compared to some of the more obscure models that the Tudor name has made over the last few decades. If we are to be more brutal, the design of the watch really doesn't make much sense. It's obvious that this piece was a trial run product, testing a new technology and method of use. But there is also something inherently fun about a watch like this. Nowadays we are surrounded by perfection. We expect to see and understand a watch on face value. If that isn't the case, generally we move on. We expect high standards, high tolerances, there's really no margin for error anymore. But we also expect the watches to be relatable, that borrow cues from past successes. Design styling that has become the norm for sports and dress watches. And the P01, with all of its quirks, isn't as relatable. And that would, of course, divide opinion. But when we look at the watch as this utility, this rugged tool designed to be used with a new system, that may have been patented for this watch, who knows. It does have something very unique to say. So here's hoping that we get to see more creativity in this field. Instead of always seeing the final product with all of its modern refinements, experiencing the developmental pieces as well would ultimately add to the appreciation of the making process. The pioneering efforts in the field of watch design and watchmaking, and just how experimentation really paved the way forward for the watches we know and love today.